you wouldn't know it by the way they I It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, and we'll see Tremaine Edmonds. He's coming off an excellent 12-tackle game last week. It's the Bears and the Vikings, and it's kicking off next on Madden NFL 24. We are pleased, as always, to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Today, we've got a Week 6 matchup for you here, as it'll be the Chicago Bears taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Alongside Charles Davis and Charles you look at this Vikings ball club they were winners last time out so they'll be looking Charles to make it two in a row and what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase good offense good defense and some key plays on special teams let's see if they can get that second win in a row meanwhile for our visitors the Bears we're in October now so everything everybody should be coming into form shouldn't they they really should and what you have now is a full routine established about what you want to get done and full focus on the season Set to go now in week six of the NFL season, and we are underway on EA Sports. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. Orchestrating the offense will be the top pick in the 2018 draft, and that's Baker Mayfield. And there was a positive in last week's loss. No interceptions thrown by him. But he only threw one touchdown pass, and you know he wants that to improve. He might even consider that as part of the reason that they couldn't take the win last time out. I believe we'll see a more aggressive version of him this week whenever they're nearing the end zone. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. Mayfield. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Well, backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. On third down, Mayfield. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. But defensively, you really can't script the start much better. You get a three and out and a sack. Yeah, you're exactly right about that. They kept him short of a first down on first and second down. And then on third down, they pick up a sack. What tremendous momentum for them to start this game. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. They punted three times in the loss last week as he sends this one away. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. They will be led out by the six-foot lefty from Alabama. It's Tua Tonga of Iloa. And you and I both know that any win is a good win. And that's what they did last week. But there's also plenty for him to work on in his game, wasn't there? Yeah. Two touchdowns, an Had interception. Yeah, you know, he wants to increase that a little bit in terms of ratio. But first and foremost. Oh, the first play of the game going to be intercepted. Tyreek Stevenson picks it off. And the Bears are going to have great field position here as this is returned just shy of midfield. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. They start near midfield following the interception as they begin first and 10. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he's got it across the midfield strike and into Viking territory. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Mayfield now. Finding more on the out route for the completion. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. 
So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Mayfield off the play fake. And he'll go right back to Moore. Complete again. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. They'll run on first down. Herrera. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. From the 21, here's the second and five. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Mayfield from the gun on third down. And that is incomplete. This Minnesota D up to the task on the third down pass play. This defense has certainly played well so far in this game, and the coverage has been tight on just about every throw. Forced a few here so far in this game, and now it brings up fourth down. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense. The firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. For the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, only gave up three points off of that, so it shouldn't be a difficult hole to overcome. It really shouldn't, as long as they're not listening to the chatter coming from the other side, because when you throw a pick, look, I know defensive backs, they have a tendency to be a little bit loud after they take one away, but they also have a tendency to gamble a little bit more, thinking they'll get a second one. Maybe they can take advantage of that with some double moves. Two are gonna throw. That's caught by the big tight end, T.J. Hawkinson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Two and now on first down. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. Now he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 23 yards, the final tally. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Here's Tonga Bailoa on first and 10. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. Here's second and ten. And again, it's Tunga Bailoa. Catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 19. A nice pickup of 17 yards. So here's a first and ten now down inside the 20. There's the stiff arm, and he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Robinson is going backwards here, all the way back to the five-yard line. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. As they've got it as we resume action. Again, it'll be Robinson. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short game. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. 
Only a yard that time, so now a decision to be made here on fourth and goal. Well, let's see what they do. They're knocking on the door here in the second quarter. And you know what you look at on your play sheet? Your two-point conversion plays. Because you've drawn up a number of them in today's football. You don't just have one or two for the game. You have more like six or seven. Which one do you like here? Because that's essentially what you're going for right now. That spot of the field, call one of those and go get six. Sly able to put this one through. So three points on the board, as easy a field goal as you're going to get, but I can see you shaking your head. I love that peripheral vision of yours, partner, because to me, if it's the fourth quarter and you're up six, I get it. But now, even if you run and don't get in, you're still setting them up to go a long field, 98, 99-yard drive. How do you look at your defense and not give them that opportunity? And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Bears' offense now gets set to head back onto the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. And right side, they're going to go option here. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, that doesn't hurt too well. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Well, now hang on here because he appears to be shaken up. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. And here comes throw number one for the backup QB. And that is incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get to third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it will be Vikings ball first and 10. Looking to pass to him. This one caught. It's the tight end, Hawkinson. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. 23 yards on the play. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. No gain on the play there, second down. Here's Tua. A complete to Drake London. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 41-yard line. Now Tua. And this one is incomplete. Well, the Vikings did a very solid 4-1 here in the early part of the year. And they've come in on a nice run of recent form. Four wins out of five. And I thought that they played pretty well last week. Their execution, their discipline, their resilience, all on display in that victory. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 16. A really nice gain of 25 yards. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds it for the first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Robinson up the middle. And he'll be taken down after a short gain as that takes us to the two-minute warning. It was T.J. Edwards who brought him down. 
Here's a second and eight. Tua sets up to pass it. Over the middle complete. It's Robinson. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. Throwing now is Tungavailoa. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. He just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. Field goal unit and Joey Sly now. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Sly able to put this one through. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals at 6-3. to three. So we're trading first half field goals. No breakthrough on the touchdown front. We got a 6-3 game. Yeah, and I know so many people look at a game through offensive eyes, right? They want to see how the game's played that way. You know how I'm going to view it, right? The defenses, to me, have responded well in this game. Like what I'm seeing from them, both of them hoping to keep it to field goals and not give up big touchdowns. The Chicago offense set to get started. And you figure, Charles, they have enough time here in the first half, more than a minute, to put a drive together, at least get them in position to try a field goal. Yeah, they've got all three timeouts at their disposal, so I'm actually thinking bigger. With those three timeouts, that amount of time on the clock, I'm thinking about trying to get a touchdown and settle for a field goal. The Bears moving hastily in the hurry-up offense to throw on second down. Turner, oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jerome Baker, and they will take over at the 26-yard line. And the rookie QB gets his first touchdown pass. That's one you put in the trophy case. First career interception. That's going to be one he wants to forget. Yeah, and he's not going to go ask for the football. Right? Yeah, yeah, you can keep that one. The key for him, what does he learn from it? When he watches the tape, does he have an answer right now where he already understands what mistake he made? That's what the coaches are going to want to know, and that's what they'll grill him on and see how he grows from it. After the turnover, it's Tua. Finding Hawkinson here on the out route. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. The Vikings going to signal for their first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. On first down, Tonga Bailoa. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. Kyle Pitts, his second touchdown on the season. And the Vikings will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. You got to figure down by the goal line. This is where a tight end earns his money in the high traffic area. And he's able to work free in the middle of the end zone and grabs that one for a touchdown. Extra point by Sly is up and good. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings move it away. Taken at the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. But the Bears are going to take over now late in this first half. And with him down two scores, you wonder if they might try and put something together, even if it's just to get into field goal range. He'll get this one complete to Zane Jones. And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Second down and three. Operating from the gun. Turner got his man complete over the middle. That's more. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in the first half of play. He finds his man complete. It's Herrera. Well, that's now four completions in a row. A good bounce back following the interception last drive. Certainly not letting it affect him, that's for sure. And we all know interceptions are going to happen. So the big trick, don't let it affect you going forward. Most of the good... That's caught inside the 20. Touchdown! Christian Watson. 
as the first half is winding down. And the Bears are able to cut into this lead in the final seconds of the first half. So on this drive, the rookie leads him into the end zone, Charles, and that helps cancel out the points that were created on the previous drive when he threw the interception. Yeah, let's give some credit to this rookie because instead of hanging his head after his mistake leads to a touchdown, he comes back out and he's firing and made up for it right there. A well-executed series helps reestablish some confidence in him to run this offense. Extra point up and good by Dicker. And the lead down to three at 13-10. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And they may just be content to take this three-point lead and head into the locker room. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks. A few teams starting to rise to the top as it's time to take you around the NFL here in Week 6. We'll begin up at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, and they are nearing halftime with the Steelers out in front. Elijah Moore, a touchdown reception. Next, we take a trip down the coast to Miami to check on the Dolphins at home at Hard Rock Stadium. And you can see, currently, they trail in that ball game. The Falcons locked in a tight one, but this is a game you feel they've got to have. Lastly, we head to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. Check on the Patriots. And that one all even as they play the visiting Texans. It was a strong first half from the lefty to a tongue of Iowa. He connected on a touchdown pass in that first half, and that's a big part of why his guys lead at the break. Okay, coach, thanks as always. This one's still everyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Vikings have to like their position. They've got the lead. They get this football as well as we are back and underway for the second half. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. Now come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. This offense set to begin the third quarter, and Charles, if they had a checklist of things they wanted to accomplish in the first half, certainly at the top of that list would be having the lead, and they've got that here. That's always the most important box to check, isn't it? But also, they've had some success in their passing game, so probably an empty box establishing the run. They're on pace for fewer than 100 yards in this one, so now they want to make sure that they get that going so they truly have a control in this ball game, and down the stretch, being able to be balanced, either throw it or run it, and try and win this ball game. Seven yards there at a first down. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. And that one too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. These two teams, they met up earlier in the year, back in week two. And it was the Vikings who won that one on the road. So they'll look for the sweep here in Minneapolis. Open man, he's got him, the tight end, Hawkinson. He'll be dropped shy of the 40 despite powering through the tackle. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. So they are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Tua setting up shop to throw again. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have the Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot. So you can't underestimate him when he's on the field. Defensive. And the pressure gets there, and Tua is going to be taken down. It's Jervon Dexter who got in to drop him. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. 
Well, that's good for a gain of six. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for the offense. And now they'll stop play here, at least momentarily. A member of the Vikings in some discomfort after that last play. But the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Setting the throw on first down is Tua. That's out wide here for Robinson. So that'll be no better than an incompletion, and that'll make it second down. From the gun, it's Tua. Pressure, and he's taken down. A bear sack. It'll go in the books as a seven-yard loss on the sack, and it's third down. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Well, that play was certainly a little bit different because on the previous play, he was sacked. This time, protection a lot better, had time to survey the field, and still couldn't find an open receiver. Sly able to put this one through, and that extends their advantage to six. It's 16 to 10. Well, looking at it from a defensive perspective, that keeps the deficit very, very manageable. You know, all things considered, not a bad job on the defensive side. Now, I would say that you've pointed out something pretty good right there, and that is you actually have both sides happy with that exchange. You know, happy in quotes, of course. One team, hey, we've kept, kept it within range. The other side saying, hey, we put points on the board and did stretch out the lead. Let's see how this one turns out. Yeah, still bottom line, though, three points for the opening drive of the third quarter. Turner now, throwing to start the drive. He'll get that complete to his tight end, Cole Komet. That's good, the completion there for seven yards at its second down. Up the middle they go. Pereira. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Four yards the pick up, first down. And we've got movement. I think this is against the Bears here. Let's find All out. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. Looking to throw. Turner. That one tipped, and it's incomplete. A good hands there defensively at second down. Back to throw. Turner. And incomplete. Fair to say it hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They've got to find a way to bring those. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. Now he's loose down the left sideline. Touchdown, Chicago. DJ Moore, 79 yards. And the Bears have tied the ball game with a chance to go ahead now in the final seconds of the third quarter. Extra point up and good by Dicker. And that will put them on top here in the third. And Williams going to sit on this one. It'll be a touchback. Two and now on first down. He's got a man. It's his tight end. That's complete. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. Options galore here, second and a few inches. This one's still anybody's ball game. It's a one-point difference here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. He's got his man, London, right side. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Back 
Out of the gun, they give to Robinson. And he's got it across midfield and into Bear territory. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Tua going to throw. Short throw caught by Pitts. It'll be a pickup of four. Good enough to earn him yet another first down. They're going to look to throw. And this one is going to be off the mark. Too far out in front. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive. But a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Two is throw, taken in by London. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. On the very outer edge of field goal range, it would be 56 yards if they got nothing here on third down. Again, they will throw it with Tunga Bailoa. Looking deep in the direction of Cooper. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. That was for the lead right there. They know they're in a position where fortune favors the brave. So they took their shot, but couldn't connect. And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out. And they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. You talk about a big kick under pressure in the fourth quarter. I mean, that wasn't like a 33-yarder. That was long distance. Not only does it show the faith that they have in him, but also remember, if they'd miss that one, they're giving up the ball near midfield. So they had to be very confident that he was going to put that one through the post. The Bears offense now getting ready to take over. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. A beautiful fake. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there. Not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Looking to throw. Turner. Catch made by Watson on the out route. Two yards on the pickup there. And now third down and six to go. Back to throw. Turner. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 39. 12 yards on third down as the drive rolls on. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. To throw is Turner. On first down, this is caught. It's Christian Watson. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. Well, this is where an offense needs to show what it's made of. And in fact, where a quarterback needs to show what he's made of. Trying to engineer a fourth quarter comeback. And he hits a big one right there. Here we go. First and goal. Again, he'll drop to throw. Oh, and a huge mistake late. It's intercepted. Picked off by Byron Murphy. And the Vikings are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. Those INTs all sting when you throw one in the red zone. I think especially as a rookie, maybe it stings a little bit more. I think what you're saying is they don't all count the same, do they? Right? Interceptions in the red zone that you've given up points now, those are precious, so you have to learn from those and in a hurry. And now out comes Minnesota. Another important fourth quarter series coming up. That last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. They start on the ground with Robinson here. And that winds up a decent run, and it also takes us to the two-minute warning. Two minutes remain, and that's our score differential as well. Two points here in the fourth quarter. 
Another run on second down. Trying to cover up. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Robinson will try to pick it up. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. They only punted twice in the win last week as he gets this one away. This is fielded at the 27. Mayfield and the offense now. Down by two. A minute 44 to go. And they're in danger of a third straight loss as they come up on first and ten. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. A quick throw there is incomplete. Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle. Kind of scan the crowd. See if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Well, this crowd is making an impact right now. Third and ten. Now a handoff up the middle. It's Herrera. And he's going to come up a few yards short of the first. They get him to the ground at the 37. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. This one, an absolute must. It's fourth and four. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Vikings, they have the football now in excellent field position. They won it offensively. Your challenge, should you choose to accept it, <laughs> take care of the football and run out the clock. They can't just go and turtle, as we like to call it, just tuck in and just sit on the ball here. Try and get that first down and finish the game off. Now the Bears will use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. And yeah, he will have a Viking first down, and that should be the one that gets him to the finish line. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about <laughs> doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So the final seconds have tipped away in this Minnesota victory, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League.